No Jumper, coolest podcast in the world. And today I'm bringing you an interview with a man who's been in the news. I feel like he's been massively misrepresented. And I think you very much deserve to have your story told. And I'd like to get the whole, the whole scope of things. For sure. I don't really know what to call you at this point either, though, because I understand we're in a little bit of a transition name-wise. Yeah. Plus, most people don't even know how to pronounce my name. My name is One Ye. Okay. Yeah. Spell it? O-N-E hyphen Y-A. Okay. Yeah. And where are you from initially? Let's just go from the beginning. I'm from Mississippi. Okay. Yeah. And uh, what, what was your upbringing like? I was raised by my dad. I didn't really know my, my mom like that too much. But, yeah, six brothers, three sisters, all raised by my disabled father. Really? Yeah. And, I mean, that's a lot of kids nah, to take for on sure. for one man, especially. Yeah. I don't know what kind of disability exactly. He, he like, bedridden. So really? he can't even get out of the bed. Wow. Yeah, for sure. And was it a bit, uh, I hear Mississippi and I think a picture like, you know, more of a country upbringing. Is that accurate? Uh, I was born in Mississippi, but I was mostly raised in Chicago. Oh, really? Yeah. So it wasn't really country, but it was ghetto. What part of Chicago? Or, uh, what? South side. Really? Yeah. So you were, you were in the sh Yeah, for sure. Until what age? Until like four years ago. I moved away like four years ago. And I mean, we interview so many like Chicago drill rappers, but throughout my life, I've also known a lot of like normal people from yeah. Chicago. So w w where did your life kind of fall on that spectrum? I was in like a treacherous area, you know, but I ain't try to like become a, you know, I ain't try to become like my environment, you know? So I, I typically like stayed out of certain shit, mm -hmm. but... You know, it. I couldn't avoid certain at, at the same time. So yeah, because I feel like we we always kind of end up in that conversation about how difficult it would be for somebody who grew up in a certain gang neighborhood to basically just be like, "Nah, I'm good. Like, yeah. I don't want to have anything to do with that." Knowing that their rival gangs might view you as just as much of a target right. as a result of being from there. There's all kinds of stories in Chicago lore about people getting killed for just being from somewhere, even if they weren't actually, like, part of a gang. Yeah, for sure. And it's like, we all, like, usually how that shit go, like, we all went to the same school. Mm. So it all really depends on who you hang around, too. So I had a very small circle growing up. I just tried to stay out of certain shit, but like I said, some shit was unavoidable. I done been shot at before. Really? Yeah, multiple times, actually. Wow. Just like being at the wrong place at the wrong time with the wrong people. Mm. So, but yeah, majority of the time, I just like stayed out the way. Right. And uh, what kind of kid were you? Like, how would you describe your personality? I was like, I was a, you know... I was a kid, bro. I was a kid in Chicago. I done did some, like, crazy shit, you know. But I wasn't, like, a menace. I wasn't terrible like some people I know. Mm. But, yeah, I was I was a pretty cool kid. I think so most of the time. So on a scale of Lupe Fiasco to Fredo Santana. Right. I was, like. <laughs> You're, like, closer to which I'm, one? like, closer. <laughs> I'm, like, closer to. To Lupe. Sorry, Lupe. I believe I so. I don't know what Lupe was doing. Oh, God, you don't kid. know nothing about that man. Yeah, he might have been into some crazy shit. I don't know. Um, and, and also, uh, Fredo Santana, certainly probably not the most extreme. Right. I would have said sure. like Rondo number nine or oh, like, God, yeah, uh, yeah. one of them dudes. Oh, God. Yeah, they're a little bit more wilder, I think. But okay, so you, because I'm just saying that based on the fact that we kind of came to know you from making online content. So were you kind of more into that state of mind as a young dude or did that come later? Yeah, I've been making uh, content since I was 14. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I blew up on Facebook a couple times. Uh, I had, like, Tyrese share my video when I was 14, Ludacris, wow. P. Diddy, you know what I'm saying? It was different. <laughs> it was different back then, bro. Different era. But, yeah, I never really had, like, a fan base. People used to, used to just take my videos and post it on their shit right. and not give me credit. Mm. But all of that changed, like, during COVID time. Mm -hmm. So what was your content like early on? Was it always kind of the same vein of just you freaking out and reacting to things? Or nah, it was, it was just, like, comedy mainly. I'm, like... I'm like a funny person, like overall, outside of this angry action shit. I'm just naturally funny. Mm -hmm. So like, I used to just like make like shit I used to just think of on some funny shit. But you know, 
it never really stuck as far as like an uh, audience. Mm. Cause it's like, it's one thing to go viral. It's another thing to actually have hundreds of thousands of people or whatever, really right. paying attention to you on a consistent basis. And I, I've known so many people over the years who've had that problem. And it's actually like that with music too, where it's one thing yeah. to have a catchy song and you could have millions of people making TikToks to it, but that doesn't necessarily mean that they're going to know your name. Right. My shit would just like get big enough for other people with bigger platforms to see it. Mm. And then they take my shit. Majority of like every time I went viral, it was always on somebody else's page, mm. and they never like tagged me or anything like that. So right, but okay. shit. Do you so? Do you think you've like sort of found your style during COVID, or was it before that? Nah, nah. Uh, around like August twenty third, actually, exactly August twenty third, twenty twenty. That's when like I post my first TikTok video, and like it blew up overnight. I got a million followers overnight. Overnight. Yeah. What? Like from zero. I had made the account that day. And what was the video? It was just like angry, uh, angry reaction. I just reacted to like a girl making cake. And she was like, <laughs> oh, the audience like talking about me. And I was just like defending her on some funny shit. You feel me? And uh-huh. that blew the f- up. People ate it up. Wow. Yeah. A million followers is insane because... Even like people who get, if you have a viral video that gets 10 million views, it's not like you're getting a million followers right. off that. Usually, if I got a video that got 10 million views, I would assume maybe I'm going to get like 20,000 followers. For sure. Extra, you know, like add it on. I guess a brand new account might be a little different just because there's probably like, you always hear about people who like get on the TikTok and just kind of explode in followers right away because they're already identifiable. Like we've seen that with a lot of pop stars and stuff but i guess maybe to a lot of people they had seen your memes and then this was just like oh that's how we can actually i think them. it was just like a, a breath of fresh air during those times because mm. like even though i'm angry actions all of my content was like on some positive shit mm. so i was just like positively like taking up for people or positively motivating people just like acting angry as hell mm. so like the world done shut down we all in the crib you know, and it was just like this positive type of content creator mm. doing it with a, a weird spin. So, right. like, I think that's what made people gravitate towards me. Yeah, because, like, you know, that energy and enthusiasm a lot of times is what makes things go viral. But, yeah, I guess that is kind of the main difference with your stuff stylistically is that it's one thing to be acting angry and being mean. Right. It's another thing to be acting angry but also kind of being, like, positive in a way and like life affirming for sure taking the right side like something people can believe in or or be behind but then also like framing it as you being pissed about it right something that would typically be negative right like a positive twist to it who would you say was the influences to your style in that regard i would give a big uh, one of my big motivations to like mr t Really? Yeah. Wow! Did not expect you to go that deep into the, the yeah, archives. That's yeah. amazing. I was a I was a huge Mr. T fan when I was little. Yeah, and that is that's kind of him too. Like his whole yeah. delivery is like he's pissed, but he's also like saying all this positive right, shit. Right. Yeah. For sure. Yeah. And he was just funny to me with all them damn chains on. Yeah. Him, yeah. So yeah. And he's still like I'm watching the Super Bowl, and he's still got a Super Bowl ad. You know, like his show has been, I don't know, off the year, off, off the air for like many decades yeah. at this point. And he's still looked at as somebody who's so famous and so ubiquitous that people, that brands still want to use him for that kind nah, of shit. Nah, for sure. As far as my content go, he's definitely a pioneer. Wow. That's crazy. Yeah, I was watching him as a kid, but I feel like his show was already like maybe even off the air when I was a kid and it was just reruns. Yeah, my my dad was a Mr. T fan too, so I think like he got me into that shit. A lot of rappers really probably owe a debt to Mr. T. Nah, for sure. You know, style-wise. Um, okay, and so the content kind of starts blowing up and how do you, like, like what's that like for you to finally have all these followers and to be having presumably like money coming in and attention? And- well, at that time, it took a it took a long time for money to actually start coming in. And at that time, I was homeless, bro. I was living in my car in Chicago. No, no, no. I was all the way out in Indiana. Oh, okay. I used to stay with like my home girl for a while, and then like that eventually like went left. So I was just like homeless, living in my car out in Indiana. Wow. And then like. I made my literally my first like 30 videos in my car. So when it blew up, I didn't even know how to react to it for real. Like, I didn't even know what to do. I just 
kept doing what was working. And then, like, eventually, like, money started rolling in. Brand deals was hitting me up. And even at that time, I didn't know how to deal with it. A lot of brand deals finessed me. I ain't going to lie. How so? They, like, lowballed the fuck out of me. Mm. And I ain't, I didn't know because I didn't have any knowledge of any of this. So, like, I would just do shit and get people, like, millions of views for, like, $500. Mm. But five hundred dollars probably felt gigantic. Yeah, you know, to a homeless car, yeah. person, hell yeah, for sure. And they knew exactly what they was doing. I ain't had no management or nothing, so that's the only thing I look back on. Like, damn, wow, I could have got way more paper. So, how long were you actually homeless for? Because like we always kind of have this conversation about how people end up homeless and how quite often it's not somebody who's just actually psychotic hooked on drugs out of their mind it could be somebody who just gets hit with one hospital bill that fucks them up or they miss miss rent or they lose their job and it just completely fucks them and they are forced to live on the street for a while yeah i was homeless for almost two years and it's because like my upbreak to be honest i went to military school when i was 18 mm. and then like after that when i came back my family wasn't doing too good like Everybody was living with different family members, so I didn't really have no place to stay. Mm. So I just, I looked around, and I'm like, I don't want to be like none of you niggas. Like, no offense to my brothers or nothing like that. That's just what the situation was. So I just went to a completely different state, and I just, like, tried to build something on my own. What, yeah, when you were looking at your family thinking, I don't want to end up like y'all, what were you thinking that you wanted to do with your life at that point? I always been telling people I was going to make a name for myself since I was, like, 13, mm. like right around the time I started making videos. So I knew I didn't want to struggle. Of course, nobody wanted to, but I wanted to be something. Like I wanted to make a way for myself. I wanted to be like known, like around the world in some way, shape, or form. Mm. So that was always the motive. I didn't know like how I was going to do it or exactly what I was going to do because I also like to do music. I've been doing music for a long time. But I used to do music and the videos, and the videos was always working. Mm. It's way harder to like, you know, get people do to music. take you serious right. as an artist. Yeah. Exactly. So like, I just stuck to what was working, what was getting me results. Mm. Definitely. So okay, you you moved to in well, what actually happened with that girl that you ended up homeless, or or do you not want to talk about the details of that? Nah, like she just like got tired of taking care of me, <laughs> mm. which is very understandable. You feel me? When you're in a relationship and you don't really have anything to fall back on and it's so easy for a relationship to kind of go poorly, right? Yeah, and I wasn't in a relationship with her. Oh, she okay. was just a very good friend, just uh -huh. trying to help me out. And, like, she would go to work every day and, like, as a man, I would feel like shit. Like, this woman working six days a week and I'm just sitting in her crib eating her food. I ain't got no money or none. So, like, she ain't really had to put me out I, I wanted to leave in a way, and mm. we just came to an agreement. Like, yeah, it's time to get the f out of here. Okay. So it ain't it ain't it ain't no love lost towards her. So what were you doing to try to make something happen while you were homeless at that point in Indiana? Like, what what did you think was gonna actually get you off the streets? I was still doing like content on mm. Facebook though. I was still like making Facebook videos, just trying to make it work on Facebook for some reason. Like. I'm 40 years old <laughs> but you couldn't get any money off of facebook right no. no so once my cousin she she actually a, a tiktok creator too her name baby terriana i think she got like two million followers she the one who introduced me into tiktok i didn't even know shit about it mm. so that's what made me like really start focusing on that app okay Okay, people, this episode is brought to you by our sponsor, Prize Picks. Prize Picks is America's number one fantasy sports app with more than 5 million members. It is the most fun and exciting way to get in on the action while you watch your favorite sports and players. Quick withdrawals, easy gameplay, and an enormous section of players and stat types are what makes Prize Picks the number one fantasy sports app. Playoff time is your time to join the Prize Picks community of over 5 million members who have already downloaded the app. This week on Prize Picks, I'm looking at the playoff basketball board and selecting Anthony Edwards for more than 29 points, as well as Caitlin Clark in her WNBA debut to get more than one point. Download the app today and Use code no jumper one word for a first deposit match up to a hundred dollars. Again, that's no jumper as the code to match up to a hundred dollars. Appreciate y'all. 
And so then the stuff just randomly starts blowing up. And then what kind of happens in your life from there? Were you able to actually like get a spot and like kind of get your life together just from the money that you're getting from TikTok and shit? Yeah, yeah. Because August, see, everything happens so damn fast, bro. Uh-huh. Like August is when I blew up on TikTok. And like around like October, November is when I met Pearl. Mm. So she played a big part in like helping me like get my shit together because I ain't had no ID. I ain't had shit to my name for real. I was just staying in hotels once I started making money. So she like helped me get an apartment. She actually let me stay at her crib. Mm. And she was, was she living in London at the time or she was still Not in, at all. She was in Chicago, right? Yeah, she yeah, was in yeah. the, the suburbs of Illinois. Right. I and think like Huntley or some shit. How'd you actually start talking to her? And for the record, we are talking about pearly things in case anybody's yeah, not yeah. sure. Yeah. She, uh, when I blew up on, on, on TikTok, I was just scrolling on my For You page and I just seen, she had made a video like shooting her shot at me. Really? Yeah, she was like, oh, this nigga. Well, she ain't saying that. Uh, <laughs> not she publicly, like, yeah. she, she like, oh, angry actually look kind of good or whatever. So that's like how we start talking. Really? Yeah, I just randomly seen a video. And was she big yet or was she still kind of in the beginning stages of her career? She wasn't necessarily big, but she had a lot of viral moments. Right, okay. Because she would like show off like her parents' mansion and shit like that. Right. So, and so you go and link with her and just hit it off? Yeah, for sure. Like, before we even start dating, like, two, three days after we met, she let me stay at the crib. Really? <laughs> she let me stay at her parents' crib. And her parents, like, was completely fine with it. I'm like, what the Wow, that's interesting. Yeah. And so what was she on at that time? Because it's like, we, I've kind of seen her go through this crazy transformation where it's like, when I started paying attention to her, she's doing like dating content, and now she's doing like sixteen-year-old girls are hotter than grown women content yeah. on Twitter and all this. Like, I've just seen her like progressively Bro. do like this weird slide into more and more extreme content to get people to pay attention to her. Brother, listen. At that time, this is what I tell everybody because everybody always say like, "Oh, she had to be a certain way when y'all was together." Bro, at the time that I was with her, like, as far as what I'm seeing on social media about her, like, it was never none of this. It was never no weird shit like this, bro. Like, she was cool. She, she like, if I'm being honest, she, like, the best girlfriend I ever had, bro. Really? Like, she, she helped me a lot. She helped me a lot, bro. Mm. Like, like, she helped me get in the gym more, start prioritizing my health. Like, she helped me, she gave me a place to stay. She helped me move in. She helped me manage my money. Like, even her parents was, like, helping me and shit. So, mm. it's like, as far as who she is today and what the fuck she got going on, I don't know, bro. I think London changed her. Yeah. She became a whole different person when she went out there. I think that the incentives of the internet really changed her because like that that dating conversation thing was like a real thing in like 2020 2021 and then it kind of turns into more like oh people want to talk about red pill shit yeah. Andy Tate's blowing up so she starts going more and more into that and I don't even know what the fuck she's doing now honestly but it just it just kind of like gotten more and more extreme but she's felt that that pressure to change her content up over and over to like appeal to an audience when from my perspective, she is not a thought leader. She's not like a brilliant mind. She's just kind of like watching what's going on in the space and she's able to kind of like provide her version of it. Yeah, yeah. Cause at the end of our relationship, that's when she started making this type of content. And mm. shit was just getting a little weird. Like when we were still together, she told me like, oh, I'm about to go to uh Vegas to go to this like pickup coach thing and I'm like what the fuck is you talking about like yeah she like oh it's this pickup coach thing he like he teach guys how to pick up women in like bars and shit like that and I'm just going to make videos about it and okay. I'm that was the first sign of shit like becoming weird uh-huh. but like I let she a grown ass woman I let her do whatever she wanted to do as far as content it was a little weird to me but you know she could do whatever right because you, you never could have guessed that it would have ended up yeah, as strange yeah. as it got but yeah. I think that's where it started because even I interviewed her in maybe 2022 or something maybe 2023 but like she you know like she she was starting to like really dabble in some of them like more weird alt right slash like manosphere talking points but it wasn't as extreme and 
to see where she even got to be like a year or two after that has been very strange. I feel like a lot of people probably want to know though, did her, was the fact that you're from like a lower class background and that you're black, how much of a factor was that compared to the fact that she clearly like comes from a more well-off family and is white? Was that, was that much of a factor? Uh, I don't think so, bro. I don't think so. Or if it was like, I wasn't able to tell. Mm. Like, genuinely, she would just, like, she would just, like, really try to help me at certain shit, like, do certain shit or whatever. Maybe I don't know, like, what that was for her, what her intentions was with that. Mm. But as far as, like, how I perceive it, like, she was just being a good girlfriend of me. Mm. Like, and all of this started, she didn't even know my situation before she made that video, like, saying she was, like, she wanted to f*** with me. Mm. So, like... I don't know. I don't think so. I think she was just being genuine. That's dope. Well, good for her then. I feel like, you know, I, I do have like a, a somewhat negative opinion of a lot of the moves she's made, but that's dope. At least no, yeah, you guys I do have too. a solid rep uh, relationship, you know? Yeah, I do too. Like, I don't agree with a lot of shit she say these days, and that's what I be trying to tell people. Mm. She was not this person when I was dating her. I don't know why she chose this as the route she wanted to, you know, go down, but... I'm just as confused as everybody else. Mm. But I get slack because I dated her. And how much uh, content were you guys really doing together? Like, did you talk about that a lot? Like, how you guys kind of work together? Or how much of that was really going on? We shot, a, we shot a couple videos together. Like, I actually, like, gave her, like, her biggest TikTok, like, video. I think it was, like, like 40 million views. Mm -hmm. She had, took it down when we broke up, of course. Mm. But, yeah, she was just, like... She just made a video like, oh, my boyfriend is like so positive. You feel me? And I just put the camera towards me and I said gorgeous. And that <laughs> shit went crazy. You feel me? Wow. But yeah, we 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 never really talked about doing content. It just like happened most of the time. Mm -hmm. Most of the time we ever did content. So. so when did things start to go bad? As far as what? Our relationship? Yeah. When she went to London. She okay. moved to London. She said she was moving to London and you didn't plan on going with her? Or? Hell no. Nah. Okay. I'm like, you want to go to London? She's like, yeah, I want to play basketball, volleyball, do this type of shit. And I'm like, okay, that's what's up. And then, like, we try to make it work, bro. Long distance. Yeah, yeah. that shit terrible. Yeah, it's rough. And then she be like, she wants to, she wanted me to, like, fly out that tour and shit. And I'm like, I didn't even have my passport at the time. Right. So... Like, she wanted me to fly eight hours and shit out. I'm like, yeah, this ain't going to work, bro. Was there part of you that was like, well, fuck, maybe I'll give it a try. I'll move to London, see if I like it. Hell no. Nah. <laughs> I ain't never want to move to London. I was thinking about going because right. she used to make me feel bad. She used to come, you know, she used to come back to the States to mm. see me and shit. So I used to feel bad. Like, yeah, I ain't never went out there to her crib or whatever. But, yeah, it just never happened. We ended up breaking it off before I could even, you know. Yeah, like, I love London. It's a great time, but I'll be real. Like, moving out there, getting this insane culture shock and having the only thing, the only relationship that you have, the only connection that you have to anyone being your girl just sounds like a recipe for disaster yeah. because you as somebody who hasn't lived out there and stuff, it's going to take you a while to even get in, like, a groove of life. And, like, it's just going to be so much pressure for the relationship to work. Like, I don't know. And I don't like long flights, bro. Right. I don't like flying in general, mm. but like eight hours in a sky gang. Like, come <laughs> on, bro. Like you, I'm a nigga from the hood, bro. Oh, my family, everybody in my immediate family has never been on a flight. Mm. Nobody except me. Right. So like, even when I had to start traveling for business, I ain't want to. Niggas were scared. <laughs> I'm like, bro, what the fuck? You hate being up there? I don't, I don't mind it. I, most of my issue come from like, like, like traveling in entirety. You feel me? Right. Like baggage claim and shit. Like I got to walk 30 minutes to the other side of the fucking airport to get my bags and shit. Like yeah. it's just the whole thing. But yeah, being in the sky, I fucking hate that shit. At it's this like, point, I feel very adjusted to flying, but I totally know where you're coming from because all of my early members of memories of flying, I was just so stressed out by it. Just everything felt like it was going to go wrong. It's just like, yeah, it, it's a very stressful thing. Yeah, but once them doors lock on the plane, I'd be like, all right, bro, if it's my time. <laughs> but it's always this little weird feeling. I feel like with everybody when you travel, it don't matter how many times you done flew before, you never just on there comfortable as hell. Like, yeah, no. Nah. You ever took a Zan? 
Yeah, nah. That'll do it. That'll get you really? comfortable. Yeah, but don't don't go down that route. Um, <laughs> <laughs> um, okay, so that relationship ends. What's your thought process at that time in terms of like talking about it to the public and making content and stuff? How does it become public? That we broke up? Yeah. Uh, I ain't really like address it publicly for real. Like, because I never did content with her on my page. I never mm. did content with nobody on my page. It's just all me. So like my audience didn't really know that I was in a relationship for real, but her audience did. Mm. So yeah, I never addressed it. I think like the fact that we dated start coming out when people's trying to like dig up shit on her. Mm. Like, oh, you talking about fat women? Like you date this fat ass nigga. What you talking about? <laughs> That's when people start to like right. recognize me as her ex. It was never really like a thing that we created, right? Because it's like easy to make you a target when she's always talking about yeah. high value men and shit. I'm like, leave me the fuck out of this, bro. <laughs> what you mean? Uh. Holy shit! So then, like, do you end up feeling like you have to speak out against her in in terms of just like uh, making it clear that you're not aligned with some of her wackier ideas? Yeah, I ha I post a couple videos like. Explaining the situation, like, listen, it's not, I ain't got shit to do with that. She was not like this, you know, because everybody was attacking me, bro. They like, she had to have been like this when y'all was together. I don't know what's going on, but it wasn't like this. And so. a, a lot of the narrative, I, I'm assuming, was like, look at what a like bad black man you are for having been with this person. Yeah. Like, like, or you're, you clearly were like, have the same views and shit. Yeah. I'm like, bro, hell nah, bro. No. So I just, I felt at a, at a certain time, I felt like I had to address that shit. But after I made a couple of videos, I ain't really talk about it for real. And did she reach out to you about it? Yeah. Well, yeah. She wasn't happy that you distanced yourself or? We was still like, we still had a little communication behind the scenes for real. Cause like I was annoyed with the shit that was happening to me because of her. Mm. So, like, when we was talking, I was like, bro, like, look what the fuck is going on. Now, if I go and say this about you and say that, I'll be wrong because you got. But, like, eventually, like, we just we just left it at where it was. Right. She's always talking about how women should basically be virgins when they get married. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I don't want to be too crude or anything, but do you take her virginity? Nah, listen, 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 listen. Okay. I ain't take that girl virginity, okay? Mm -hmm. Somebody way before me did. Right. And I ain't even, listen, <laughs> listen, listen. <laughs> that would be so legendary to just be like, I took pearly things. Hell virginity. nah, nah, it ain't That's like a crazy that. crazy claim to fame. I get a tattoo. <laughs> Unfortunately, I know who did, though. Why are you mad? This? Oh, my God. But, like, listen, it's, I ain't even. It was probably a long time ago, you, right? I, mean, I ain't even trying to say nothing too crazy. But, no, I didn't take over Jerry. Hell no. Okay. It ain't like that. But, no, 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 no. Because, look, look, I, initially, because I hit you up a couple months ago mm -hmm. when all of this shit was going on with her and I was still, like, a little bit tight about her. But, like, I feel like in this point in my life, bro, I done turned the new leaf. I ain't gonna lie. And, mm. and, and in reality, that girl ain't did nothing to me. Right. Like, yeah. She was actually a, a, a fantastic girlfriend. We just didn't work. So, like, I ain't even trying to come up. I ain't even trying to say nothing. No, I feel I respect that because, like, it, it would be super easy for you to just, like, trash her knowing no, the internet yeah, would be, eat it up. Yeah, but it I respect be, you not. You know, be, yeah. If yeah. she didn't do bad by you, whatever. Yeah, she told me some shit in confidence. And, like, it's, nah, I ain't trying to come out like that. She did a gangbang one time? <laughs> <laughs> what the fuck is that? Bro, no, 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 no. Oh, don't. Uh, Take my silence as an answer, bro. I'm just saying. I'm just saying. If I was still pissed, but I'm not. She cool. She cool. She was cool right. with me. And we and we we really. What, what reason do we have to shame somebody about their past sexual behavior anyway? Who gives Type a shit, yeah. right? Yeah, okay. I don't want to be judged for that. Been doing all kinds of freaky shit my whole life, you know. Hey, yeah. Fuck it. Um. Okay. So that relationship ends. 
how long is it before you end up in this this other relationship that ends up being especially uh, tumultuous? Boy, uh, me and me and Pearl broke up probably like. Like end of we we officially like stopped talking to each other like around the end of twenty one, mm-hmm. and I met like this new girl, like beginning of twenty twenty two, and we started dating like we started messing with each other around like July of twenty twenty two. And how'd you meet her? She was working at my um apartment complex. Okay. Yeah, she was one of them little people who like. So you'd already tried meeting somebody through content creator stuff. Now there's a more normal human yeah, way to meet somebody. Yeah, yeah. Okay. I was trying to stay like out the way, but I learned like all these women like to a certain degree like care about that shit, bro. They be all wanting me to like post them and shit, mm. and like they don't like that the world don't know that I'm in a relationship or messing with them or whatever. And I'm like, I post specific type of content. Yeah. Like, I ain't trying to like force you in that because you like want the world to know, but that always been a problem. Yeah, totally. Especially, I think the way that you approached it is genius because me in my early days on YouTube and shit, I would just be hanging out with a different girl, making vlogs, just kicking it with different girls, and it would just be nonstop problems where they would get hit up by some dude they went to high school with who would be like, what the fuck are you doing and kicking it with that fool? He's a scumbag, whatever. Or like, you know, you, you make a video hanging out with one girl, there's some other girl you're seeing, she's pissed, she ain't fucking with you anymore. It's like, if you get known on the internet for doing one type of content, from my perspective, you should stick to that content, but be very deliberate about anything else that you're gonna do. Like if you decide that you wanna share your girlfriend with the world, do it, but but make that decision very carefully and deliberately because right. realize a lot comes with that. For sure. And that's what I be trying to tell these women. Like, you don't understand how the internet is until you actually in that shit. Once you put the internet in your business, they stay there. Yeah. You can't like you can't like separate certain situations like, oh, I wanted the internet to know this about us, but mm-hmm. not this. You feel me? And then Let's say, like, I do something to you that you don't like. You're going to feel the need to go tell the internet mm. just because I gave you this platform, just because you feel like you owe them an explanation, like, why we ain't making videos no more and all that. So it's just, like, it's too messy, bro. I like to keep my private shit private. Mm. And plus, like, she she really pretty, bro. And, like, I ain't want to post her, like, showing off because even after all this crazy shit, when I'm posting, like, videos of her beating the shit out of me, mm. people still, like... You could beat me. Mm. <laughs> they still in her, in her DMs like, you could beat me. Right. Like, so it's like, I just like to keep my shorty to myself type shit. Definitely. That's a wise move. You you were wise beyond your years at that point because that's something that I think a lot of people, it takes them a while to figure out that that's probably the best move. Like, if I was single right now, I would probably be honest with any chick that I was going to date, I'd be like, listen, like it, it is going to be many, many months before I acknowledge anything is going on with us publicly. But unless like I'm also in the porn world, so it's kind of different, but it's like, unless you're like a content creator and we're just going to kind of be like hanging out and just making content about us hanging out. But right. also like I would be down to make content about us hanging out. Even if we didn't have anything going on sexually, we could just kind of troll people and fuck with the world and just like present it as if we're hanging out. But I'm I, like, if it's a real relationship, I would want to, you know, respect the sanctity of that relationship by not putting it out there to the world because as soon as you put it out there to the world you got thousands of people who are going to be weighing in on it and the reality is is i might be mentally strong enough to just be whatever through all that but chances are you exactly aren't. but they don't be seeing it like that they just be like i want all these bitches in your comments to know you taken yeah. that's that really be the issue 100 percent, yeah and i'll be like bro you don't know what come with that yeah and, and ain't nothing you could say to them those specific type of women to like convince them otherwise so it's like, it's not what you could really do about it for real. For sure. But so how long, like, you get into that relationship and does it seem like everything is perfect or are you seeing signs kind of right away that she might not be no. all there? In hindsight, bro, when I look back at the shit, like, I ignored a lot of signs. That's why when it comes to the position I'm in right now, I, I, I blame myself, to be honest, because I allowed certain shit for too long. Like, the first week, I still got the text message right now. I text her, like, the first week of us dating. I'm like, it's not a, it's not cute how easily angered you get. Mm. Like, I still got the text message. I'm like, it's not cute how 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 fast you get mad. 
So like when I look about when I look back on shit like that, I just like I just shake my head because she pretty. It's easy to like ignore certain shit with a pretty female with a pretty mm. woman, bro. It's it's too easy. You want her to be the thing that you exactly. are imagining in your head, so you'll just kind of exactly. let shit go because you want to have this cute ass girlfriend, but you know that might make you kind of ignore a lot of shit. Exactly, and I ignore, bro. I ignore hella shit, and it end up. Biting me in my ass at the end of the day, bro. Mm. Okay, so from the very beginning, but like, was it physical from the beginning? Like, was she someone who was like quick to just start attacking you? Nah, it didn't, it didn't start off like that. She would just like get verbally like abusive. Mm. Like, it started that way. And it, it came in like, it wasn't immediate either. Cause like in the beginning of the relationship, it's the honeymoon phase. It ain't really no issues for mm. the first couple of months. Yeah. But, like, it started to happen, like, three, four months, like, after we made it official. And that's when I really started looking at her, like, you crazy. <laughs> you insane. Well, like, what kind of stuff? Give me an example. Like, i never forget. The first time anything got physical between us, I was living in a high-rise downtown Chicago. This was in 2022, end of 2022. We were standing in my game room. She was mad as hell about something. I don't even remember. I just remember her smacking the dog shit out of me, bro. I swear to God. I, I just remember her smacking the dog shit out of me. And it was one of them smacks where you like feeling woozy after. I'm a big ass, I'm a big ass dude, bro. You look like you could take a punch. Bro, she smacked the dog shit out of me, bro. And I'm just sitting there. I'm just sitting there trying not to react. So I grab her, I pick her up. Put her outside my room and shut the door because I was pissed. And then, like, I stayed in the room for, like, two hours just playing my game, trying to calm myself down. She came in all apologetic. I'm sorry. I was drunk. I was, you know, I was in my feelings. I'm sorry. It'll never happen again. She was lying. Oh, God, it happened again. <laughs> but that was, like, the first time anything ever got physical with us. Do you think that her drinking was a big part of it? Yeah, many women throughout my life were like totally cool whenever they were sober and just the worst person ever whenever as soon as they were drunk. Bro, this 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 situation where I went to jail, mm. it happened while she was drunk. Right. I don't drink at so all. Like, I don't drink at all. That shit disgusts. You smoke weed? I smoke weed. Okay. Well, I stopped like two months ago, okay. but I, I was. But that shit was that shit disgusting. But she she was drunk as hell when we got into it. And that's why she was making all of these like crazy decisions mm -hmm. when it came. Like it's like talking to a brick wall when I was speaking to her, bro. I ain't gonna lie. Like I would try to, I would try to break shit down the best way possible, and it will never get through to her. Mm. Sober person plus drunk person is very unlikely to work from my perspective. Because like, if I'm with a chick and we're both drunk, chances are we can have a good time. If she's drunk and I'm sober, there's almost no chance that we are going to be able to have a good time. Like, and, and you could be like lightly buzzed, but as soon as you get like really drunk, and me as a sober person, I'm not the most tolerant person. Like, yeah. I'm just probably not going to really be fucking with it. I'm probably going to leave. I'm probably going to like kick you out. See, you know? I'm I'm chill though. Mm, yeah. Like, you do seem pretty chill. I'm, I'm, bro. I'm chill as fuck. Ninety nine point nine percent of the time, the only time you will see me ever get out of my character is if somebody fucking with me. Mm. And like when I say fucking with me, I don't mean like it takes a lot to really get me out of my character. Somebody got to be really fucking with me to get that side of me out. You mm. feel me? So like she could be drunk, she could be whatever. Like she done been drunk plenty of times with, and shit was cool. But once you start getting aggressive, and once you start like doing too much, and like that's when it gets like annoying. Especially like if you create a a, a situation while you drunk, and for some reason my dumb ass trying to talk to you while you drunk and like explain how you doing shit. Of course it's not gonna get through to a person who drunk. Mm -hmm. So it's just like. So what was the actual situation the night that you got arrested? What were you guys doing? Bro, we was we was at a Super Bowl party at her friend crib. And like she was hanging out with her friends in the living room and I was hanging out with her friend boyfriend mm -hmm. and he had some friends over, right? Okay. So one of her friends boyfriend's friends, he had like a pistol on him, Glock or whatever. So he was talking real big macho, like in a in a um driveway when we were smoking and shit. So it's like 
he was he was basically trying to clown me for dating a white woman, basically. Really? So mm-hmm. I'm like, and and in hindsight, bro, everything that nigga said that night, he was absolutely right. <laughs> Shut up, what, bro. Like what kind of shit? Like he was saying, like specifically about her, like she gonna get you in some fucked up situations. Mm. But at the time, like, that's my shorty. Like, that's the mother of my son. Like, what the fuck? Like, so I'm like- Oh, you I had just, already had a kid together at this point. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. this shit. was like February. Okay. So I'm like, I'm like, watch your words. You know what I'm saying? You can have your opinion about black people and white people and like intimate, inter, 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 interracial dating and all that shit cool. But when it comes to my woman, I don't give a fuck what her color is. You're not finna- disrespect her in any type of way mm-hmm. so like he was threatening to go to the car get his pistol all of that macho shit bro but like i end up letting him have it i'm like my son and i like i ain't even trying to play too tough right now also maybe like the worst possible reason to shoot somebody yeah, i could but ever he imagine was drunk. He, was, oh, he had okay, a bottle yeah. of casamigos in his hand this mm-hmm. is why i gotta stop hang, hanging around people who drink bro because mm-hmm. he was drunk as fuck and like talking about everybody trying to calm the situation down it end up calming down. So when I, I, when I, when we go back into the living room, she don't even know I'm pissed. She mm-hmm. don't even know that he was just sitting there talking about her and shit like that. So, like I said, I make music and she drunk at this time. She like, baby, let me play your music off YouTube on the, and I'm like, listen, I was trying to explain to her without causing like a scene. I'm like, you don't know what the situation is. Like right. this audience is not as friendly as you thinking. So I'm telling her, don't play, don't play my song. She play one song. I'm like, okay. I'm like, I right, don't play another. She play another song. And I'm like, okay, it's the last one. She play another one. So at this point, I just, I'm just annoyed. And that right there is what started all of this shit. That small situation right there is what started all of this shit. Mm-hmm. So we got an hour long drive back and she's still drunk. And I'm telling her, cause this done been a conversation before. Like when I ask you to do very simple shit, mm. like just please do it. I play, I pay every bill. I take care of you and my son. I protect, I provide, I treat you with respect. The only thing I ask is for you to do the small shit I ask you to do. Mm-hmm. You don't gotta clean, you ain't gotta cook. She don't even know how to cook. You ain't gotta do none of that shit. Just do the simple shit I ask you. So she didn't, and I was trying to explain to her what the situation was, but because she's so she drunk, and because she like she quick to get ang- angry in any type of situation, the conversation went left. Mm. I wasn't mad. I didn't approach the situation like aggressively or none of that shit. I'm like, how many times have we had this conversation to where I ask you to do something and you don't do it? Nigga, she start japping on She start like going crazy on me in a passenger seat, bro. Like just going crazy. I almost, I damn near pulled over mm. on a, on a, on a, on a highway, bro. Cause she like going crazy and my son in the back and like, and that's what started all of this shit. That whole situation went to the crib and like, that's when she she started to get physical, bro. Mm -hmm. Like, and, and I ended up getting arrested, of course, on a felony charge with. So she's attacking you. To what extent do you restrain her? Or like, what's your response? Cause I'm assuming that you're a fucking giant compared to her. So it's kind of a weird position, bro. Anytime that woman get physical with me, the only thing I do is restrain her. Mm -hmm. That's why I'm so pissed at her right now. Right. Because because she a small white woman and I'm this big black dude, right? So when I do grab her, when she acting crazy, when she attacking me, I leave bruises. Right. But when she's showing these bruises to anybody with a, 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 a normal IQ, you can see, like, these are not you being beaten bruises. This is you being grabbed bruises, right? right. But she's 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 giving this narrative mm-hmm. that, like, I don't know how to control myself and my emotions when she knows it's the other way around. Mm. So I never balled up my fist or even open hand smack or hit any woman. Right. But it's always the women, because I done been in this situation before with a past girlfriend. Uh It's always the women who put their hands on me that accuse me of being a woman abuser. Mm. I'm a million things, right? You could call me whatever. 
I'm not a nigga who put his hands on women. I'm just not. Mm -hmm. What I am is somebody who's not about to allow anybody to put their hands on me. Mm -hmm. And is that so fucking crazy? I don't care if you got a coochie, a penis, a combination of the two. Because you don't know how to control yourself, you want to put your hands on me. And then when I do something about it, when I react in any type of way, now you want to say I abuse women? Mm -hmm. That's fucked up, bro. So are you just like grabbing her by the wrist? I be grabbing her by her arms. Mm. Like, cause she she short. She right. like five, six, five, seven. So like when she acting crazy, yeah, I grab her by her wrist sometimes when like her hands are swinging. But like most of the time when she like charging at me, I grab her arms. Mm. You feel me? So all the bruises and shit that she posted that you that whoever saw, it's it's on her arms. Like mm. it's fingerprints. Right. And I'll be like, but the internet just see a woman with bruises. Right. And I'm like, bro, if you actually think about how she could have got these bruises, it's very easy to understand what the fuck is going on right now. Right. Like, I mean, and also, like, if you were to hit her one time, I mean, bro, it's going to be. I could knock her head obvious. off her shoulders if I wanted to, bro. <laughs> right, yeah. Like, what are we talking? Her we, having bruises on her wrists or her arms is just like that's like, almost like how, what what dude beats the shit out of his girlfriend and just aims for the fucking right, arm? Bro, like that's, that's not literally yeah. what I was saying to my father on the phone. No I'm dude like, who beats his girl has the self control to constrain themselves to that. And most of the time, dudes who put their hands on women is not good at communicating. That's why they go the physical route. Right. I'm very it's very clear that I know how to communicate and get my point across. Mm -hmm. So I'll be talking to this woman. I got video evidence of this girl putting her hands on me and me not doing anything back. I got so many videos of me talking to this woman, just like I'm talking to you. And she mad, she pissed, she whatever. And I'm just trying to calm her down. So it's very obvious what the fuck be going on. Mm. But like I said, bro, what hurts me the most about all of this shit is because there's no way I could convince you what actually happened. There's no way I could convince anybody who watching this video right now what actually goes on behind closed doors. Mm -hmm. You got a choice whether you want to believe what she be saying or what I be saying. Mm -hmm. But this girl know me, bro. This girl knows me. She had my son. We was locked in a few months ago. This girl knows me. And she's trying to push this narrative and destroy my reputation. That's what fuck with me the most, bro. Because she knows that that's the only way that she can really get at you. Literally. Yeah. She don't. Boy. It's the most powerful route towards fucking your life up. It's Literally. Be it's better than stealing from you. It's better than, I mean, getting you arrested, which obviously that was part of it too. But to ultimately be able to destroy somebody's reputation without having to actually prove any of the shit that you're saying is such a powerful tool that a, a pretty large percentage of women at some point in their life are going to deploy. Bro, you don't understand how much money I lost. Just behind those ac accusations. Mm -hmm. Just the fact that TMZ posted that I went arrested. Everybody pulled out. Mm. Everybody. It's not even, they didn't even wait to see if it was true. It don't matter. Mm. It's the fact that you was child friendly and now everybody's saying you put your hands on women. Mm. I lost millions, bro. Wait, okay. So let, go back to this night. How did the cops end up getting involved? She calls them? She didn't call the police. The neighbor? Or? No, no, no. Actually, she did call the police. Okay. She didn't call. She didn't call nine one one though. For some reason, for some reason, she called uh, uh, the, the police department. Okay. And she like, oh, I want to report what happened, but I don't want them arrested. This is what she was telling me. <laughs> she like, I just wanted to report what happened. I didn't think they was gonna arrest you. I'm like, what the fuck did you think was gonna happen? You tell. First of all, the story you telling them didn't happen. The story that you told them, and and this was proven, her friend, her friend that we was, her, her friend house that we was over for the Super Bowl party, we went there to talk about everything. It was me, her, her friend, and her friend boyfriend. We all had this long conversation about what happened, and we all came to the conclusion that she fucking lied. Mm -hmm. I got, I could call him right now to back up my point. She's a fucking liar. So you telling them all of this shit, and you showing them bruises. What the fuck did you think was going to happen? Right. <laughs> She's, she wants them to come over and, like, give you a slap on the wrist and say, like, hey, cut it out. I mean, obviously, she if she had a fucking ounce of knowledge about this shit work, she would realize that the cops pretty much, like, any time they get called for domestic violence are going to have to arrest the, the guy. It's so much always. shit that makes me upset about, like, how she did me, bro. Like, because...
She done put her hands on me more times than I could count. I ain't never called the police on her. I'm just not the type. Mm. You a little ass, you a little ass girl for real. You ain't hurting me, but you is slapping the shit out of me. You is throwing shit at me and leaving scars and shit. You is like hitting me with shit. You, I could, I could do this to you if I wanted to, mm. but I'm not. We locked in. You my shorty. It don't matter if you mad right now. Like, I'm not finna do that to you for real. I don't want nothing on your record. And like, when I defend myself from her, and I don't even hit, I don't even hit when I will never hit a woman, bro. Mm. Like, but I'm gonna do something if you putting your hands on me. Right. You, you, I'm not finna just, I'm not one of them niggas who like, babe, stop, please. This isn't like you. No. <laughs> You're gonna curl I, up in a ball. I'm not one of those niggas, bro. <laughs> I'm gonna, I'm gonna do something to stop you from hitting me. Right. And there's people in my DMs to this day, like, hell of a man you are. And I'll be, some messages I open, I'll be like, bro, I got video of this girl, like, beating the shit out of me. And I send that video to them, and they're like, it don't matter, bro. She's a fucking woman. You should, and I'm like, so let me get this straight. She's, she's hitting me. And instead of going to talk to her about what she did to start the shit, you want to scold me for how I reacted? Mm. What the fuck? What the hell is going on? It don't matter if you're a woman. It don't none of that shit matter to me. But the society we live in these days, bro, everybody is convinced that, oh, it's worse when a man put his hands on women. Mm. Physically, yeah, of course. Males typically is stronger. As a man, you pretty much are always gonna have to show a lot of restraint in those of situations. Course. And you know? I yeah. do. Like I said, if I was a menace, Bro, you would know if I actually put my hands on this woman, bro. I got hands for real. And you know, like I know, especially coming from Chicago, that there is a lot of fucking guys, including guys who will sit on this podcast and will say, if my bitch puts a hand on me, I'm beating the dog shit out of her. I that, know is a few. A, that is a very normal disposition for a lot of guys from your background. And so for you to say that you would not choose to engage that way, I'm the same way. But all I'm saying is that there are a shitload of dudes who do not think that hitting a girl after she hits them is a big deal at all. I know a few. <laughs> yeah. That's what I'm saying. And I'm like, bro, it, it just hurt that she's trying to spin this narrative knowing that I'm damn near the the victim. Yeah. But I don't see myself that way. I'm a, I'm a grown ass man, bro. Mm -hmm. You just trying to spin this shit and like ruin me, bro. Like, so the cops come and what do they, they do? Oh, it was five of them, bro. The cops came the next day, bro. I got my son. She, she, she had a hotel or some shit. Bitch done stole my, I ain't even gonna call her bitch. She done stole my car. She done ran off. So it's like, I'm with my son. It's like 10 o'clock at night. I'm making me some noodles, nigga. I'm chilling. I got my jammies on, bro. I'm like, oh, me and my son, we finna sleep good. Five police officers lock at the door. I, I look through the peephole. I'm like, I'm going to jail. I already knew it. Because mm. ain't nowhere in hell. Five police officers showing up to talk to me. When I open the door, because, like, my son was asleep. I ain't want to open the door for real. But they was banging so hard, they woke my son up. He started crying. Mm. So I'm like, whatever. I open the door. They like, uh, we here to talk to you about what happened. And I'm like. Bro, if y'all came here to arrest me, just do it, bro. And they like, oh, no, we didn't come to arrest you. We just want to hear your side. It was fucking lying, bro. So I told them what happened, and they arrest me. Uh -huh. They like, on a felony charge, I had to pay five grand to get out of jail. I ain't getting that money back. And the case was dismissed. It was dropped. She, she, she felt bad. She was crying and shit uh -huh. that I went to jail. Oh, she didn't think, she didn't want that to happen, huh? But I did. So they took me to jail, bro. That's that's what the fuck happened. Right. And so did you get the feeling, though, that they actually thought that you were a fucked up person? Or did it feel like they were just doing what they had to do as a result of any kind of yeah. DV charge being reported? Yes, bro. That's literally what they said. Like, anytime calls like this happen, we have to we have to make an arrest and mm -hmm. all of that. So, bro, like I said, I have my son. I'll never forget this day. This girl done traumatized me, bro. My son ain't in nothing but a diaper. We sitting there chilling. So when they told me they had to arrest me, nigga, they took my son out of my hand, put me in handcuffs, bro. And they walk in the other hall, the other way down the hallway with my son. I'm hearing him crying, him hearing his cries fade off while I'm in some fucking handcuffs going to jail, bro. And I will Brutal. never forget that day, bro. I will never forget that. I still think about that shit. Just the fact that the kid's probably not going to forget it either, too, man. 
that's Bro. insane. And that that's her kid. Like she initiated that, you know? Yeah, what yeah. And bro, it's clear as day she don't respect me as a father, bro. Cause even even after all of this shit, this how much this how hard I love, bro. Even after all of this shit, I still was trying to make it work with this girl. Mm. The reason we not together right now, she left. It was it was shit was just getting worse. It was to the point where I couldn't talk to her about shit, mm. nothing. Like any conversation I tried to have, she'd be like, I'm, I don't want to talk. I don't want to talk. Aggressive as hell about everything. So we kept getting into it about small petty shit. I ended up getting a hotel for two, three days just to leave her to herself and let everything calm down. Nigga, I came back. She done packed all her shit and left. Really? She in Wisconsin with her family, with my son. I ain't seen my son in a month, bro. Oh man. I ain't seen my son in a month. And he he about to be he about to be nine months on the twelfth. My son couldn't sit up by himself when I seen him. He couldn't hold his bottle. He couldn't walk. I'm missing important milestones right now, and she don't give a fuck. I'm begging this girl. FaceTime with me at least. So I could see him. Right. I couldn't I FaceTime him one time since she left. I was begging that girl for three weeks and she would not budge. And she's just using this to like piss you off and get you into a bad emotional state by withholding the one thing that she knows that you can't get away from how much you care about and she justifies her actions with lies bro this is what she's putting me in a in a in a position like publicly i can't win she telling her friends her family in the internet that i'm this abusive monster mm. and that's why she ran away oh oh but like I got this long ass messages of a million reasons why she told me she left and not one of them was because I'd be putting my hands on her. Right. Not one of them. She never once said, I fear for my life, my safety of my son. You, you, you be hitting me. You be whatever. She said, I left cause this, 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 and everything she named nigga on my mother's grave, everything she ever get on me about be reactions after she do something, mm -hmm. after she do something fucked up, she will skip over the shit she did to talk about how I reacted. Mm. What type of shit is that, bro? I've never in my life dealt with a person like her. I mm. swear to God, bro. She ain't the type to self-reflect and like, yeah, I know I started it by doing this. I could talk for 30 minutes like, yeah, I reacted wrong. I shouldn't have said that. I shouldn't have did this. And the minute I said, but none of this would have happened if you wouldn't. Oh, see, there you go. Trying to blame everything on me. Mm. What? I swear to God, nigga, right hand of God. I'm like, I, cu I couldn't win, bro. I couldn't win. So I ain't heard shit from my son. None of that, bro. We in a weird custody battle and shit like mm. that now. And it's it's just all fucked up, bro. She trying to ruin me publicly and privately, bro. Because like I said, she, bro, understand something, Adam. And I know I'm rambling right now. No, but I, I it's, just, it's important because you're speaking for a lot of fucking dudes out there bro, that deal with this shit. Understand something. Understand something, bro. This ain't my first breakup. I'm not, I'm not upset that she left. Right. If she didn't feel like this relationship was for her, she's a grown ass woman. That's your prerogative. You can do whatever the fuck you want. Leave. I'm not going to beg you to stay with me. I'm not upset that she left. I'm I'm upset how she left. Mm -hmm. I'm upset how she left. Like, she didn't even respect me enough to sit down and have a conversation like, this ain't working, bro. I don't want to do this. Let's figure out a way to be co-parents. Let's figure out how we're going to go about this because this ain't for me no more. Mm -hmm. She up and leave with my son. And I'm begging her. I'm begging her. Long ass emails because she done blocked me on everything. Long ass emails like, Let's figure out what the fuck is going on. Cause you still got hella shit here. Mm. My son crib and his bassinet and everything that's was too big for you to take on the flight is still here. Mm. What the fuck is going on? How are we gonna do about it? What's going on? I, bro, a week, a week after she left, she already fucking with some new dude. Mm. A week after she left, she already out there fucking with some new dude. With my son, won't let me see my son. And just like, she done already destroyed my image. The only thing I ever posted about that girl was me defending myself. Like, I'm not this type of person. I never publicly tried to come at her. 
ever. I could say something right now about some shit I know about her that will have everybody who come in contact with her perceive her differently. I could say something right now that she told me in confidence, but I won't because I don't want to destroy her life. But she told the internet, I was beating her while she was pregnant. I was dragging her across the apartment. I was cheating on her. All of this shit because she was mad at me, gang. Mm. She was mad. It wasn't even a situation to where she was like, okay, we just got physical and I really feel like a victim. I can't let this, I can't let this keep happening. I gotta tell my story. No. She was mad that I was on live talking about how difficult it was being with her and nobody knew who the fuck I was talking about. Mm. Nobody knew who she was. When I got arrested, nobody knew who she was. Right. Her name wasn't in the documents or none of that. No one knew. Mm-hmm. So I was just talking about a Jane Doe. But she got mad that she knew that she was, I was talking about her. And she posted all of these videos with all of them bruises and shit from months and shit ago of me defending myself from her to try to push this narrative that I'd be putting my hands on her, bro. Right. Damn. So, okay. How, how long between the incident and it being reported on TMZ and shit? Is it like instantly? or It's it like take- three days, three, four days. And does it just open the floodgates where you're because there's probably so many people that don't even know you who are attacking you as well as all these people who are calling you or calling themselves fans of you and they're probably turning on you left and right and you've never really dealt with this before you've never yeah. really been like you, you you as far as i know you never even had like a mini cancellation Bro, I've along never, the way right i've never had i've never had like negative comments right like i was the positive creator I didn't even have negative comments. Mm. So I'll wake up and everybody's sending me these articles and shit and everybody posting me like angry reactions, arrested for domestic violence against a woman. Now, all of the people who don't know my content, they just see me as a angry black man. And that's why that story was so viral is that you don't even need to know that there was a, a content creator named angry reactions, but it's just the idea of a person with that name who was caught up on some domestic violence shit is just so automatically viral that people just had a feeding frenzy about it. Hey, can you can you pass me a paper towel, bro? <laughs> These lights hot as hell, bro. Yeah, and I'm I'm stressing. But yeah, thank you, bro. Yeah, it that's exactly what it was. Most of the people who was commenting on that didn't even know who I was or what type of content I made. The people who was fans of me, it's like, bro, I know, I know you didn't do this. Mm. I know you didn't do this. It like, bro, but it's you know, been the worst couple of months of my life. And that's the fucked up part, too, is that because you were keeping the relationship part of your life private, that when this comes out, it's like the people haven't observed you guys together because if you had been showing your relationship consistently and showing what you were dealing with and showing that she had this sort of crazy side to her, a lot of people that were in your fan base probably would have been more sympathetic. But because you decided to try to keep stuff as off camera as possible, it was it was worse, bro, I'm assuming. I, and, bro, it's just overall, bro, it's a sad situation mm. overall because, like, everything – it took me years to build up this shit, bro. It took me years. From nothing. Like, From literally, me. the modern American dream is being the dude that has fucking no resources and is able to get it out the mud off YouTube or TikTok or whatever. Like, that. that is what all these kids want to do. Bro, everything I had when I met this girl, I no longer have. Everything. I lost everything. And like I told you, like I told you, it's not about her leaving. It's how she did it. Mm. You not only trying to leave, but you're trying to leave me with nothing. You're trying to destroy me. You done destroyed my reputation. You done destroyed my income. You done took my son. You got people looking at me sideways. Like, and you running this smear campaign you st- bro, when I posted my my the video of her putting her hands on me, mm. she told me, like, I'm getting death threats because you posted this video. I took it down and she still refused to take the videos down of me. Mm. She still had videos up of me, painting me out to be a woman beater. Right. Because when we were supposed to do this interview the last time, maybe a month or two ago, 
you had made a couple of YouTube videos where you were breaking down where you were at and what the whole situation was. But then she came out soon after that and put out another video where she basically said, like, no, you are not innocent. You're actually guilty as fuck. And the only reason I didn't press charges is because I felt bad for you or whatever. But she it felt like, you know, maybe things were calming down. And then she decided that she was still pissed and she just wanted to amplify the shit again. Right. Once. Once I got arrested and it was a felony charge, she was scared as hell. She was so apologetic. Mm. She felt so bad. And then she was on my side. She kept sending emails like, I don't want to do this. I don't want to press charges. He's innocent. He's whatever. She was on my side. Mm. The case got dismissed, nigga. We went out to celebrate. She was happy. She was all of that shit. But a couple weeks later, like I said, I went live. That one live, that one live made her do all of this, mm. made her do all of this. And she was like, oh, I could have pressed charges, but I ain't want to. And, and like I said, bro, I'm a, I'm a, I'm a keep saying this, Adam. The main part that hurts me, bro, is this woman knows me. She know who I am. This woman looked me in my eyes and told me she was going to die with me, bro. I'm telling you. When we went to the hospital, when she gave birth to my son, she had a C-section because he was breached. They had to cut her open. Like, they asked me to step out of the room for two minutes so they could prep her for surgery. She's screaming for me, bro. They let me back in. She got tears running down her face and all of that shit. I'm kissing her face telling you, you strong, you beautiful, you got this, you whatever. She thinking she going to die on that table. I ain't never in my life been with no, do no shit like that with anybody. I ain't never in my life been through no shit like that with anybody. And even after all of this shit, a couple weeks before she left, she told me, because I told her, I told her, like, I feel like you you mentally checked out because I can't talk to you about shit. I'm trying to solve shit. I'm trying to fix shit. And you not budging. You don't want to talk about shit. I feel like you done moved on already, but you still here. And she like, no, I don't want nothing more to still be like a family and whatever that shit. But I was absolutely right, bro. She left and she was fucking with somebody a week after, bro. Mm. A week after. A week, my nigga. And she don't even want to be a decent parent. She don't even want to, like, figure out how we going. You just can't up and leave with my son. Mm. And then I, fi I find out this is how she left her last two relationships. What? This is how she left her last two boyfriends. She up and left without telling them shit. And I'm thinking I'm different. I'm thinking it's different. We have a son. You didn't have a child with these other niggas. Mm. And you still do this shit. You still just up and leave. And now you you taking my son. When I finally FaceTime my son after three months, bro, he wouldn't take his eyes off of me, bro. He smiling. He laughing. He giggling. You think my son don't miss me right now? You think he don't understand? You think he he not confused as to why he don't see me around? I'm missing all these important milestones and all of this shit that I want to be around for and she not showing no signs of giving a fuck, bro. And it, At the and same time, trying to simultaneously tell, convince the world that I'm this terrible person. And you're creating this lifelong project that you're going to have to be on of basically like explaining this to your son and how you didn't want to have to be apart from him and, and shit as he gets older. like and And all because of her trying to make this kind of statement it's just it's fucked bro i'm at the point now because i don't got lawyers involved to try to like see my son now like we in these weird ass court cases bro and like we in this weird ass custody battle and we we doing all of this shit because i wanted to see my son she don't know how deep this shit is going mm. she don't know Cause she done threatened to take shit to the internet before. And I'm telling her like, you ruining money for my son in the future. Mm. This is his future, bro. Like this ain't just for me. This ain't just for you. I'm stacking his bread for him. You ruining this shit because you mad, bro. And Adam, you can only understand this shit to a certain degree, bro. You don't really understand this shit. Nobody do. Cause like I said, I can't convince you of the type of man I am, bro. Mm. You just, you just got a choice whether you want to believe me or not. She knows, bro. Mm. She knows. 
This girl was my best friend and she treated me like this. She treated me like she never gave a fuck about me, bro. And trying to convince the world that I'm this terrible person. That girl didn't never love me, bro. And it's showing. It's showing after the fr- it's showing after the breakup, bro. Because even after you done did all of this shit, done ruined all of this shit, I'm still not putting dirt on your name. I'm still not out here exposing your business and, and making you seem a certain way or make it. I'm still keeping a certain amount of respect for you. You don't even respect me as a fucking father, bro. You don't give a fuck that I don't see my son for a month, bro. The thing that killed me from watching your videos about it soon after this happened is realizing that you had basically lost faith in your ability to make the kind of content that you had been making that the character of angry reactions or angry reacts was like, just, you didn't feel like you could really do that anymore because now your image has been compromised where she's painted you as this person that actually is like an angry monster. So before you were saying positive things in kind of an angry tone and now you feel like you've been forced to kind of split from that persona, which is the thing that had, you know, endeared so many people to you. Yeah, like, my decision to do that was 100% based on the reaction I got from the public. Mm. 100%. You should have seen my DMs. You should have seen my comments. I had a Hyundai, uh, a Hyundai video I had posted. That was the last video I posted. They didn't even want to pay me mm. because they said I did more damage to their company than good. Because everybody was flooding that video. Oh, Hyundai, y'all work with woman beaters and all of that shit. So it's like, think about it like this. Everything that angry reaction consists of, that whole persona, when shit got rough for me, it was used against me. Mm-hmm. It was used against me. That, that very thing that brought so much joy to millions of people <laughs> saved millions of lives was used against me. Everybody was saying the same lame ass joke. Oh, angry reactions had an angry reaction. And like I said on my YouTube video, I couldn't even get the benefit of the doubt. People didn't even want to wait it out. The, the companies, the brands that made it sound like we was all one big family. That was my third year working with Hyundai. <sighs> they came back around the same time every year. That was my third year working with them. They pulled out before anybody. They said, take that shit down, and we not paying you. So that's why I let that shit go, bro. Because, like, it'll never be the same. I can't be all aggressive and shit. It don't matter what I'm saying. And and millions of people still think I'll be putting my hands on women. I don't know how to control myself emotionally. Mm -hmm. So it's like, it's forever, it's for, it, it, will, it will forever leave a, a bad taste in a lot of people's mouth. It's fucked up, too, because... TMZ should give as much light to this interview or to the case being dropped or to the charges not being filed or to like all these different developments like that shit should in a in a just world receive just as much airtime as the initial accusations. And now I do think that a lot of people are going to see this interview and be like, oh, fuck, like this dude is the real deal. Like he's he's a, a good person. I personally I didn't know anything specifically about you before this interview, but I am fucking sold. Like, I'm 100% behind you. You just seem like an incredible person. I just hope that, you know, people are willing to, like, give you another chance because that was killing me when I was hearing you act like it was over because I know, having been canceled many times and shit, that there's always a light at the end of the tunnel. You just have to continue on and like just really be able to persevere through that shit but like realizing that you were having opportunities like this hyundai shit and everything like just having those kind of corporate brand deals i mean that is a reality is that a lot of that shit kind of goes away at some point as soon as you have any, even a semblance of of controversy but at the same time bro i've seen people go through worse shit publicly than what you've been through and still come out the other side like over and over like this is definitely not the end of you as a person and, and do, do you agree with me that in some way maybe you are ready to move on from that character in general and that like you have more to offer as a content creator do you, have you spent much time thinking about that nah yeah it was it was something i was thinking about mm. like I just didn't imagine it happening like this. Yeah. And who knows? Maybe just the universe or God or whatever you believe in, like forcing me to 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 do what I'm supposed to like 
what I should have been done. Mm. But like as of right now, bro, and I'm not even finna get too personal. You and everybody else don't even understand the type of position I'm in right now. Y'all don't understand. Y'all don't understand. This shit fucked me up. This shit, I can come back. I plan on coming back. I don't think this is the end of me as a creator, entertainer, whatever. But as of right now, I'm in a situation to where I don't even know what the fuck I'm going to do to get myself out of this. Mm. And it's, and every time I get so, every time I get deep in thought about all of this shit, I, 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 I remember like this shit all happened because the woman who claimed she would die for me was mad. All of this shit happened because my best friend, the mother of my son was upset and she's she's dying on this hill. She's not going to listen to this interview and feel bad. She's not that type of person. She convinced herself that she's the victim in every fucking situation, Adam. Mm. Every situation. Even in situations where she come at me crazy and I don't even react, it's still somehow my fault. Still. Mm. Especially as of late before she left, I couldn't get through to her at all. So she's not going to watch this and feel bad. She's not going to watch this and drop her case against me or or she's she's sticking to the shit. She's telling her friends and family. Hmm. I was a victim. It ain't shit I could say to her sister to make her understand what type of person I'm in. I am. She don't even know me. And she hate my fucking guts. Only because of what her sister been telling her. Hmm. Fuck. Got my, my own family looking at me weird. Mm. I, I, I done been kicked out of Ubers because people think I put my hands on women. More than once? No, one oh, time. Oh, okay. That's fucked. What kind, got, of, what kind of person was it? I don't know. Some like Indian dude, if I had to guess. What the fuck? I don't know. Kick me out of the Uber. Like people looking at me different. Like... I could tell people recognize me in public because mm-hmm. I've been doing this shit for four years. Mm-hmm. But people would just look at me now. They don't come up, ask for pictures. They don't. Come. It's a whole different ball game for me, bro. <sighs> and she doubled down and made that shit worse. She was on my side when I got arrested. She felt bad, nigga. She got pissed again and doubled down on that shit because I went live. You coming at my whole character as a man because I went live to talk about you and niggas didn't even know who I was talking about. Dang. And I still blame myself. I shouldn't have went live. Mm. I shouldn't have went live. I wouldn't be in this situation right now if I didn't. And it's so fucked that you have a kid with her. So it's you can't just completely separate. You can't just completely never have anything to do with her because she's the only person that could help you connect with the one thing that means more to you than anything. And that's what I'm saying, bro. If she'd have left and we ain't had no kids, would I have been salty about it? Yeah. Mm. It'd have been a lame ass move, but what can I do? You your own person, gang. Go ahead. But you up and left and took my son, and I can't even get a FaceTime out of you. And there's a lot of guys who wouldn't really give a fuck, who would just, okay, whatever. I don't need to see my kid. I'm going to just go do my thing and not really care. And it's like, because you have a big heart, because you're the kind of person that wants to have a relationship with your kid and won't be happy unless you do, you're able to be hurt. Bro, you, Adam, you don't understand how much I miss my son, bro. Mm -hmm. You don't understand. And it's like, anytime I try to make anybody understand what's going on, she just doubled down on the shit she been claiming about me, bro. And now, at the most, people can do is, oh, I don't know. I don't know how you is. I could believe what you, but I don't know. And that's reasonable. That's understandable. Mm. But it's like, I can't be upset with nobody except her. Because, like, you, I'm going to keep saying, you know me, bro. You know how, how much patience I done show with you. You know how many times you done put your hands on me and I never reacted. You know I'm not a woman beater. You know all of this shit. You know I'm a good fucking man and a good father. 
but because you done with this relationship, you want to leave me with nothing? You want to fuck up my whole life on your way out? Bro, and I always thought, because I got this sense, when I hear somebody talk, I always thought like everybody can just understand when somebody is being 100% genuine. Mm. It is not like that for everybody. Mm. It's not like that. It's not like that, bro. So a lot of people still don't know if I beat women and that's so fucked up, bro. I spent four years dedicating my entire profile to uplifting people, saving lives, bro, telling people how important they is. I open, I open the door for elderly women, for women in general. I give up my seat on public transportation. I'm a good fucking dude. I'm a good dude. And she taking me through hell publicly and privately because we didn't work? Because you mad about some shit that happened in our relationship? I don't understand, bro. I don't understand. And simultaneously trying to convince everybody that I'm a terrible person. Get the fuck out of here, man. Get out of here. And I know, just like I said in my video, I know my aggressive tone right now probably don't help my point when it comes to this aggressive shit. To me, it's very convincing. But yeah, I mean, I could imagine some people having an opposite reaction. But in general, bro, like I feel like more than anything, this interview is going to be the rebuttal that you actually need to make people realize that they wrote you off without reason. And like I bro, I could get over this internet shit, bro. I could get over this internet shit. I will never get over the fact that this woman who had my son, everything we done been through, everything we done been through, cuz, you doing this to me. You doing this to me. You treat me like you never gave a fuck about me, bro. Bro, you don't understand, bro. You don't understand. And she the type of person, she need to be around people. That's why she fucking with a nigga already, bro. Mm. She need that validation. I've been at the crib by myself, processing everything, thinking about how I'm going to go about everything. I don't need people. I don't need her. She probably out thinking, oh, yeah, I told him. See, I don't need you, gang. I don't need her. Her leaving, it's cool. You can do that. Her How she left will never sit right with me, bro. Mm. Bogus as hell. Bogus as hell. You not just some girl, bro. You the mother of my son. You the mother of my son, bro. And you using him as a fucking pawn. Trying to hurt me. Trying to destroy me as a person. It's beyond this relationship shit. You could go on the internet and say whatever you want about me. What I did to you. How I treated you. You know I'm a good fucking dude. And anything she she try to make me look bad with is was me reacting, and she still try to emphasize it to make it seem a certain way. Mm. She treated me bad, damn that every fucking day for the last six months, and I held on to this woman, and that's why I blame myself. That's why I blame myself for sticking around a motherfucker I should have been let go of, bro. That's why I blame myself. I mean, I just want to tell you that I've seen so many people go through the ringer on social media and shit and come out the other side of it once they are able to, like, really show the world who they are. And in particular, when they're able to, like, double down on their content and continue to be somebody who makes shit that people love. But I feel like the problem with you is that you're so fucked up mentally over not just her doing this to you, but then also the shit with the kid. Like the fact that you're bringing up your kid and how much you miss your kid just as much as you're bringing up or, or more than you're bringing up the fact that you've had this devastating blow dealt to your career to me is a, kind of a testament to who you are as a person because – you know, there are a lot of guys who would be able to not see their kid and not have it be the worst thing in the world for them. I know I'm not that kind of person, and you could definitely tell that you're not that kind of person. Bro, yeah, as far as this internet shit, I'm in a fucked up position because what I was doing, like, I can't do. as like, And that's just the decision I made. So when I do come back, it's going to have to be something completely different. So my audience may not receive that mm. or so but i ain't i ain't worried about that shit like i feel like i'm a i'm a good entertainer and i'm a win at the end of the day i'm just i'm just a naturally good entertainer so yeah i can win the internet back or whatever bro it's like my issue my main issue bro i cannot believe she doing this to me 
Because like I said, you don't know me, bro. This girl. If anybody know I don't deserve this shit, it's her, bro. It's her. She notice. She know I'm not this type of man, bro. She notice. And she doing this shit because she mad at me, bro. She ruining my fucking life, bro. Because she mad. I miss my son, bro. I ain't... S- bro, I ain't seen my son in a month, cuz. I ain't seen my son in a month, bro. I miss that nigga every night, bro. She could leave, bro. She could leave. I don't need her, bro. How you gonna go to a across the fucking country with my son, bro? And don't even wanna, don't even wanna FaceTime me. Man. I don't understand. I don't understand, bro. I don't understand. And I used to tell my family when they used to tell me, watch out for her. I used to tell her, I used to tell niggas like, bro, she ain't that tight, bro. She ain't gonna do me like this, bro. She ain't gonna do me like this. Nigga, I was wrong. I was wrong, bro. I was wrong. Cause she done, she done put her hands on me. She done did some foul shit, nigga. Before and after our relationship, I know, I know so much about this woman. She told me shit. She ain't, she ain't never told nobody. Her parents don't even know. She told me so much shit that I could look at her sideways about. And I only am not, I'm not exposing that shit. But I, I, I understood you, bro. I I stuck by you. It was rough, but I did that shit. She just disposed people, bro. Once I learned from her ex that this is how she left him, and her ex before her ex, that this is how she left him, and she was fucking with another nigga within two weeks, just like she doing me, I understood this is the type of person she is. I understood that, and she convinced me that I was different. You had my son, bro. We went through that C-section together. I thought I was different. I thought this was different. And she just up and left and took my son. And already getting her, her, her back blown out by other niggas. While I'm sitting at the crib hoping that this shit going to fall back in, in place somehow. Man, it's very easy to move on when you under another nigga. I understand. I understand. Bro, I'm I'm telling you that I can tell, I feel 100% confident that you're going to make it out the other side of this shit in terms of being able to show people who you really are. I feel like this interview is like open and shut, showing people who you really are. In terms of the family shit, in terms of being able to maintain the relationship with your kid, I mean, that's going to be harder. That's going to be probably have to be worked out in the courts and shit in terms of all that. But I feel like, you know, you're going to come out the other side of this. I just, I want you to have that fucking confidence. I've seen people be through, been through worse shit in terms of being publicly shamed. And I just, you know, I believe in you as a, as a creator, as a personality, as a person that people are going to want to rally behind because you really speak for a shitload of people out there that don't really have their struggle documented or, or spoken about. Yeah, bro. I'm knowing because a lot of people hit me up on Instagram saying, yeah, bro, I went through a similar similar situation or whatever. And I'm I'm doing my best to hold on, bro. I ain't I ain't folding under 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 none none of this shit. It's hard though, bro. It's hard. Most days I be chilling. Like I'm I I, I done stop like checking her pages and all of this shit that you do once mm-hmm. once you just fall out with somebody or whatever. And it's just like you know, I'm holding on, but some days, bro, some days I ain't gonna lie. This morning was hard for me, bro. This morning was real hard for me. I'm getting tired of waking up without my son, bro. I'm getting tired of doing that. And I know he missed me, bro. You should have seen his face when when she called me, when she finally let me get a FaceTime. I don't, I, don't, I don't deserve this shit, bro. I don't deserve this shit. And it's exactly this. This is what happened when you hold on to somebody that you should you should have been let go of, bro. This is what happened. 
it's a tough lesson learned because the truth is is that if you had been around the block a few more times and ha- and dealt with crazy ass chicks more times maybe you would have been a little bit better of a judge of character and you would have been able to avoid getting into this situation with her it's because you had a big heart and you were open and you chose to like look past all the red flags that maybe somebody who had you know dealt with more women would have noticed it's it's because of all that that you're basically ending up in this situation i'm already knowing bro and and just to set the record clear bro i ain't perfect I don't want nobody to think that that's what I'm trying to say. Mm. I done did some fucked up shit to that girl. I done said some fucked up shit to that girl. I ain't no woman abuser, bro. I don't put my hands on nobody in any way, shape, or form unless they put their hands on me. Then I'm going to do something. If you a guy, I probably handle it a little different. If you a woman, bro, that woman don't hurt me for real when she put her hands on me. So I ain't finna knock her head off her shoulders or none of that shit, bro. But to do that shit and then spin it on me publicly? I can't believe, I cannot believe she doing this to me, bro. I still can't believe it. I still can't believe it. That girl was my best friend. That girl was my best friend. Even when I get good news these days, she be the first person I be thinking to call until I remember what the fuck is going on. I still be wanting to talk to her. I still be trying to, bro. And she done already moved on. She done already put herself back on the market. Man. I don't know. I don't know what to say. This is a really shitty situation to be in. And I do think that you're going to come out of it a better person or or a, a stronger person, a person that's a little bit more resilient but you know i'm just i'm sorry that you're even having to deal with this shit in general because it's especially the shit with the kid and the the double whammy of like having to not be able to see your kid and then also having all this reputational damage slash damage to your career done is just it, it will be too much for a lot of people to take i mean how dark has your mental state gotten throughout this i ain't the type that uh you know what i'm saying do anything to myself and i was just telling my brother this yesterday I understand why guys do. Yeah. I understand why people do. And I ain't never had the thoughts I deal with these days ever in my life. But I understand. I get it. I get it, bro. I get it. Because this girl, she torturing me, bro. She torturing me. She torturing me, bro. And the more I try to make it work for like, for the benefit of me, it just keep getting worse. It just keep getting worse. Like I said, I, I'm I'm taking her to court to get my son back. She done filed as a rebuttal. She done filed a domestic violence case against me because I did that. Mm. Why you didn't do it before? If you, why you wait until I try to get my son back to do this? This can't be real life, bro. This cannot this cannot be real life. I've seen this relationship going a million different ways. This was not one of them. This was not one of them, bro. It's fucked up, man. But you just got to, I don't know, keep the faith and just know that you'll see a better day. Like, I think you're going to come out of this stronger and, and better and I know it's not going to be easy. It's not. It probably sounds easy for me just saying that, but you know, you're, you're not done. No, I believe that. I'm just just trying to hold on to my moment, calm, bro. That's all I can do. I still appreciate your words, though, even though you don't think it got that much of an effect. It do. I appreciate you, bro. I don't even want to like throw any specific people's business out there, but I'm just saying I've seen a lot of people who have been crushed, publicly shamed, destroyed by the internet to the point where even I didn't really think they were coming back, and then they fucking did it. Yeah. And it's like ultimately it was because of the them being great content creators, being good people, and just being able to like get past all that shit. And I know that it's not going to be easy for you to get back to – the kind of mentality that you need to be in in order to be able to 
show people who you really are but i feel like this interview to me like like i guarantee we are going to look at this fucking comment section and it's going to be the opposite of what you were getting when this shit happened on and tmz was reporting about it or whatever like people are going to see this and they're going to say fuck like we can't just let this kind of shit happen to good people with no evidence hopefully hopefully i can only do what i could do you know i'm just I'm just trying to make the best of the situation until shit change bro that's all i can do there's so many people that i talk to on here who are basically very surface level self-serving people and i could absolutely tell that you're not that kind of person and i think that the people out there are going to see that too and i feel like hopefully Fingers crossed that when you look back a couple of years from now at this whole thing, that this interview might be part of where the tide started to turn and things started to get back on track for you. I, I believe that. I, I actually believe that. But I don't know. I don't know. I mean, you have put it out yourself on YouTube and everything, but I feel like people seeing it in this kind of length, like it's just it's going to have an impact and that people are going to are going to want to see this whole thing get righted. I appreciate you for having me, man. No, and I, and I know it wasn't easy for you to sit down because we had to reschedule this shit a couple of times yeah. where, where you just straight up said, like, bro, I'm not in the mental state. Like, yeah, I, I, can't, I, I can't do it right now. I told you I was still trying to make it work. Oh, and that. Oh, yeah. So I ain't even want to come over here and like, you know what I'm saying? Make her look a certain type of way. I was still down to forgive her, bro. Mm. And she up and left me. Crazy. Crazy, bro. Crazy. But yeah. I appreciate you for having me, man. I, it was it was hard for me to come on here, but I felt like it was necessary. I'm crying and shit. <laughs> Bro. This content shit will take you in crazy directions you didn't know that you were going to go in life, huh? Man, bro, I, I ain't see my career ever going like this, bro. Mm -hmm. I swear to God. Well, it is what it is, man. You're going to come out all this shit good. It's going to be all right. I appreciate that, bro. For real, man. Like, I can tell clear as day that you're a good person and that you're not bullshitting me. And, I appreciate you know, that, you. man. 100%. Anything I could do, I want to, you know, throw my weight behind that. Anybody watching this, just we'll link everything in the description. Just show them some love because I'm sure that the likes and the comments and shit mean a lot more right now than they have ever before back when everything was going good. Yeah, for sure. 100%. What do we what do we title this? Because we got the angry reactions thing, but then we got your new identity. We'll figure it out. But yeah, like like what are you more comfortable going by at this point? Bro, you can just do whatever. You know, I I, I tell people to address me as one yay. Okay, but like if you want more people to see it, they don't know who one yay is yet. Right. You know, so do do whatever you feel need you need to do, bro. For sure, man. I, I just want to see everybody out there get behind you. And I feel like. Pause. What pause, the fuck? fuck. Oh, Bro. Man. <laughs> wait, wait, wait a minute, bro. <laughs> that was good. That was good. I didn't know Chicago dudes did that. Every time I say pause, everybody looking at me like I'm crazy. <laughs> yeah, bro. God damn it. I didn't see it coming. Hey, man, I appreciate you so much for real. I appreciate you, bro. Thank you. I, I know you're gonna come out of all this shit a better person and with a with a great career and we're gonna get that fucking kid back, man. I don't nah, even know what he sure. looks like, but I'm really investing in this little motherfucker now. Bro, that he the cutest he the cutest baby you ever lay eyes on, bro. I'm telling you. I can show you. Mm. I'm about to show you. Let me see. Him. Oh god. Let's do the dad thing. Yeah, bro. I got some good snaps of my kid the past couple of days because uh, my girl had to get surgery, so I've been like way more of a dad the past couple of. What's she had to get surgery for? Uh, she had to get a C-section scar fix and shit. Oh yeah, three and horrible. a half. How, how, see, my son's gonna be nine months, bro. Oh yeah, he's still fresh out the coochie. <laughs> oh yeah, bro. <laughs> That's a good looking kid. Oh, yeah. He light skin, and shit, bro. <laughs> I miss my son, oh, bro. Man, wait till he finds out about what the last couple of weeks have been like for Drake. Hey, oh, he's gonna be like my light skinned brother. <laughs> Thank God he like that all this happened when he was young. Yeah, <laughs> yeah man. Fuck. All right, man. Hey, I appreciate you. Everybody, you know what to do. Turn my man up on all social platforms and whatnot. We'll link them all below. 
I uh, appreciate sure. you, man. I appreciate you, man. Keep your head up, dog. Uh, no Jumper, coolest podcast in the world. Check us out on YouTube, TikTok, Patreon, and Instagram. Like, comment, subscribe. No Jumper.com if you want to support. Appreciate you, G. For sure, man.